I am Dr. Yogesh Mishra, Professor in Electronics and Communication Engineering Department of GMR Institute of Technology. So, uh, we are, I am going to present basically here a lecture series based on subject processors and controllers. Almost all the students, they study about processor and controllers, whether the students they are from electronic background or they are from computer science background or electrical background. So this is a core subject in electrical background students, for the electronics background students, for the computer science background students. In some universities, there is one subject based on processors and there is another subject based on controllers. But in some universities, processor and controllers both are covered in one subject only. So here we are going to discuss in this lecture series about processors and controllers. Now before coming to processors and controllers, I would like to take you back in mid, 40, mid 40s. So what happened in 1945? First digital computer was made. So in 1945, first digital computer. So first digital computer was made in 1945 and the name of that computer was ENIAC ENIAC Here each alphabet is having some specific meaning So E indicates here electronic N numerical I integrator A and C means computer. So E N I A C. So this was the name of first digital computer. Now basically uh, what are the various essential components of digital computer? So for a digital computer, there is a block called as CPU, Central Processing Unit. Now in this Central Processing Unit, there are registers. So these registers are used to store data which are used during the processing of those data. <coughs> Apart from these registers, there is a block called as AN. So this ALU means arithmetic and logical unit. So this arithmetic and logical unit performs arithmetic operations like addition, subtraction, division, multiplication and the logical unit, it performs the logical operations like uh, AND operation, OR operation, XOR operation, NOT operation. So arithmetic and logical unit performs arithmetic and logical operation over some data. Now, apart from these two blocks, there is another block called as Timing and Control Unit. Timing and Control Unit. So the purpose of this Timing and Control Unit is, it generates various types of signals which are required for proper operation of this Central Processing Unit. So these three are essential block of central processing unit and of course central processing unit is a block of computer. Now this central processing unit 
Now here we have another block called as memory. Right? So this center processing unit must have the capability to communicate with the memory. So what is the meaning of communication with the memory? Whatever is there in the memory should reach out to the center processing unit. Center processing unit will perform certain arithmetic and logical operation. After that, whatever result is generated, that result can be stored in these registers or that result can again send back to this memory or at the same time, these results can also be sent to output device. So, right? So, here we are having output device also. For example, uh, printer or uh, your monitor. These are the output device. Now, at the same time, we have here a block called as input device. So, example of input device is a keyboard. So, from the input device, we send the data. This data will be stored in the CPU, in the registers, and this CPU will perform certain operation. What operation it, it will perform? It will be decided by a program, which is stored in the memory, and after performing the arithmetic and logical operation over the data, it will generate certain result. Again, the result can be stored in these registers or they can be stored in memory or they can be sent out to output device. So now, these blocks as a whole, as a whole, is computer. So, now in 1945, first digital computer was made and the, what is the meaning of digital computer here? So, basically this central processing unit was made up of digital components and it can perform the operations over digital data. That's why it is a digital computer, right? Now, Now to make this center processing unit, uh, the basic component which was used at that time was vacuum tube. So vacuum tubes were used to manufacture this central processing unit. So basically vacuum tube is a tube in which a vacuum is created and the electricity flow will be there uh, in the vacuum, right? So size of vacuum tube is large and at the same time when we operate these vacuum tubes, a huge amount of heat is also generates. So now now in this uh, first digital computer central processing unit approximately around 20,000 vacuum tubes were used right 20,000 vacuum tubes were used to make that uh, central processing unit. Now as I told you the size of vacuum tube is large that's why the size of that computer was very large around four to five people were used were used to operate that uh, computer now since a huge amount of heat also generated when vacuum tubes were in operation due to that we required at that time a very powerful cooling system and when and also there is one problem with the vacuum tube due to huge amount of heat uh, on an average after every 20 minutes one vacuum tube uh, got failed now you have to call an engineer he has to find out which vacuum tube is faulty 
he has to replace the tube and again you have to operate the computer but again after 20 minutes on an average again another vacuum tube will fail so now what happened so one thing all those computers whose central processing unit was made up of vacuum tubes comes in first generation of computer right so here uh, first generation first generation of computers in this cpu was made up of vacuum tubes right now now what happened in 1947 first semiconductor device was invented right so 1947 first semiconductor so first semiconductor device was invented in 1947 so semiconductor device is like uh, pn junction diode and pn transistor pnp transistor right which are which are just uh, fabricated uh, on semiconductors right so now this first semiconductor which was invented in 1947 this was invented in uh, bell's lab bell's lab of usa right and three persons were involved in for the invention of this semiconductor device and these persons name uh, one was Bardeen another was Stockley and another person was so these three persons were in, involved in the invention of this semiconductor device. So this semiconductor device was invented in 1947 and for this invention these people they got Nobel Prize in uh, 1956. Now what happened? All the vacuum tubes of the central processing unit were replaced by these discrete semiconductor devices. Now, to do what happened? Since the size of these semiconductor devices uh, are very small, that's why the size of that computer uh, reduced. Right? So now all those computers whose CPU were made up of semiconductor devices, discrete semiconductor devices comes in the category of second generation computers right so second generation in second generation computer cpu made up of semiconductor right and this second generation computer uh, it came in the market in 1955 first second generation computer in this all the uh, uh, all this central processing unit uh, in place of vacuum tubes uh, they were using semiconductors now what happened again the uh, development in the technology in the electronic industry continued and in 1958 first ic that is the integrated circuit was manufactured. So this IC uh, was manufactured uh, in USA Texas Instruments. Right? And the person who was involved in the uh, manufacture of this integrated circuit was J. Kirby. Right? So, J. Kilby manufactured first integrated circuit. So, in integrated circuit, uh, we are able to fabricate many number of discrete components over single 
integrated circuit. Now what happened? Now in second generation computer, we were having discrete component. But with the invention of integrated circuit, these discrete components were fabricated in single ICs, right? So uh, the logic of CPU was bigger. So they were not able to fabricate all the central processing unit logic in one IC, but they were using 1000 or 2000 ICs, right? So now what happened? Uh, now it comes third generation. Third generation of computer. In third generation of computer, uh, semiconductor devices now uh, have been replaced by integrated circuits. Oh, obviously now there are many integrated circuits, but again the size will again reduce, right, due to this integrated circuit. So in third generation, we are having now uh, CPU made up of ICs. There are many number of ICs in the central processing unit. And this third generation computer came in the market in uh, mid 60s. So in mid 60s, these type of computers came in the market. Now again, the technology in electronic industry uh, advanced. Now what happened with the advancement of the technology in 1971? Uh, people were able to fabricate the whole central processing unit logic inside one single IC. Right? So in 1971, what happened? Intel company, they fabricated all the logic of central processing unit inside one single IC. Right? And that IC was named as 4004. Okay? So now, this is your microprocessor. Microprocessor. Right? So, what is microprocessor? When the whole logic of central processing unit is fabricated inside single one single integrated circuit, then that central processing unit is called as integrated, um, sorry, microprocessor. Okay, so we started here with processors. So basically, we are going to study about microprocessor, right? We are going to study about microprocessor. So what is the money? What is the meaning of microprocessor? Uh, well, the whole logic of the central processing unit. So what is there in the central processing unit? We already discussed in the central processing unit. We have registers where data will be stored, which is basically a storing place. We have arithmetic and logical unit, which is used to perform arithmetic and logical operations. And we are having time and control unit, which is used to generate various type of signals, which are required to perform the operation of central processing unit. So now uh, all these logic is now fabricated in single integrated circuit and that single integrated circuit is called as microprocessor so here this micro micro means micro means the physical size right so this is the physical size but the computational power is same only thing is Earlier, the first generation computer, as I told you, it was of very big size. Now, size has been reduced into one single integrated circuit, but the computational capability and power is same. Right? So, when the whole central processing unit is fabricated inside single integrated circuit, so that integrated circuit is called as microprocessor. And if a computer is having microprocessor as its CPU, then that computers comes in the category of fourth generation. Right? So fourth 
generation computer. So, first microprocessor was made in 1971 and by an Intel company and this microprocessor uh, basically this microprocessor is a 4 bit processor right so it was used in calculators right so it is having some computational power and at that time it was basically used in uh, calculators so we will what is the meaning of 4 bit processor that that we will discuss in uh, coming lectures so this is about the just historical background of processors okay so whatever we have discussed till now so I am having few images so can so that you can visualize the things uh, here this is vacuum tube so you can see the size of vacuum tube if you compare these tubes with the semiconductor devices like uh, uh, diode and transistors so you can find it is very large right so these are a tube in which vacuum will be created now inside this tube there will be anode and there will be cathode right so uh, electron will be moving from these electrodes in the vacuum right in this way electricity produced now here uh, in this diagram you can find these are the vacuum tubes three vacuum tubes are shown here so with these vacuum tubes some uh, system has been designed right so due to vacuum tubes the size will become very large so it happened in the first generation computer right see this is the first computer which i told ENIAC so this this was the first digital computer in 19 45. See the size of this computer. This was this was the size of this computer, and and you can see how many people, how many people were uh, operating uh, this computer. One, two, three, four, five, six. Maybe somebody is uh, somebody hiding just backside of this, right? So here, these uh, ladies, they they were just operating this computer. So the the size of this computer was very big only due to the vacuum tubes. Now in uh, 1947, as I told you, first semiconductor device was invented. So these three people were involved for the invention of that semiconductor device. Okay, And the device was invented in Bell's lab, USA. So the persons body, Shockley and Betty. Now these are the semiconductor devices. Right? So this is one transistor. And the part number of this transistor is BC547. So size, you can see the size of this transistor is very small. So it is having three legs. One, two, three. First one is collector, second one is base, third one is emitter right so this this bc547 is npn transistor and here this is one image of diode right the part number is 1n4007 so here we have anode positive terminal also called as p terminal this is cathode negative terminal also called as n right so with the help of these discrete semiconductor devices uh, vacuum tubes were replaced right and and, used, uh, and uh, replaced and that central processing unit in which these uh, type of semiconductor devices were there those computers uh, comes in the category of generation 2 computer right so this is uh, semiconductor based circuit so here this is a transistor here there is some diode so this type of circuit is there. now after this uh, what happened uh, integrator circuit was invented was 
fabricated in 1958 and it was in Texas Instruments by J. Kilby, right? So he invented these ICs. So in a, this is this is a diagram of integrated circuit, right? So here actually the real logic, real circuit is this, right? Real circuit is this much only. Real circuit is this much. In this integrated circuit, now we are having many number of transistors and diodes, right? Many number of transistors and diodes are fabricated inside this small, small, small circuit, right? And here from from these uh, wirings, we are having the connection, and these wirings are connected to these pins, and from these pins, we can send the data to this integrated circuit or we can receive the data from this integrated circuit, right? So, this is the integrated circuit based uh, circuit. Now here, in the generation 2 computer, many number of ICs were used to make the central processing unit, right? Now, with the advancement of the technology, technology continuously advanced uh, in electronic industry, and finally, what happened? Now, entire central processing unit now in one chip, right? And that chip is called as microprocessor. That chip is called as microprocessor. And first microprocessor in 1971 by Intel company. And this is the part number 4004. Was the first microprocessor. You can see this. So the whole central processing unit is now inside one integrated circuit, right? So again you can see, these are the pins, but the real circuit is here. Real central processing unit is here. So what, what are the various components of central processing unit? Various components are registers, so there may be registers, uh, arithmetic and logical unit, timing and control unit, so everything is fabricated over this small IC integrator circuit, right? And in this way, and finally, uh, this is the microprocessor based computer. So, this is your processor, microprocessor, right? So, this microprocessor, if you if you open the central processing unit box of your desktop computer, then you will find some this type of small chip is there, right? That is your microprocessor, right?